Five panellists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just decolonize you. You're watching The Advocates on Plus TV Africa. In commemorating an occasion, it is profitable to chat the footprints of past notable figures. I'm asking you not to forget the history. The month of March is widely recognized as Women's Month and sees a swarm of hashtags and images filling the media space, all in commemoration of the International Women's Day. And with each year brings its own unique theme, this year being each for equal. Scrolling through my feed, just about everyone had something to say with words like women power, gender equality, etc. And even the younger generation, my generation, joined in the frenzy, some of, which, some of whom I fear may not have a proper understanding of the themes or why there is an International Women's Day in the first place. So I invite you to take a stroll down history with me. Not like I was present in the days, but as it was told my mother and experienced by the mothers before hers. Women had zero powers, suffered marginalization, lacked political willpower, and overall, lacked seats at the table of men. In essence, women were nothing but baby-making machines and tools for homestead responsibilities. Thus, the International Women's Day had its origination from protests and resilient activism towards women's liberation. Let's come home. The history of women's rights in Nigeria is one of struggle, of protest by strong women of old, the likes of Fumilayo Ransom Kuti, the, who was described as the doyen of female rights and famous for leading the Abel Kuti Women's Revolt of 1940. Somehow, all we were thought growing up was that she was the first woman to drive a car in Nigeria. Also of notable reference is Margaret Ekpo, Bola Kufariji, and many more who led revolt and delivered political suffrage to Southern women in 1958. While it wasn't until 1978, 20 years after, that their Nigerian counterparts received rights to vote. But what do we have today? Northern states still live in compliance with the Sharia laws, which limit women in many aspects. We are still held by cultural and limiting beliefs about a woman's place in society. And it also seems like the gender activists end their activism on our media pages alone. Our society's defini current definition of a strong woman is one who has undergone severe hardships of poverty, illiteracy, or domestic violence, and is still able to raise her kids. I am not intending to demean such strength. But it is rather disheartening that the caliber of women we have today are being celebrated globally than they are at home. Yes, I'm talking about the Forbes list of Africa women, then our own Ngozi Okonjo Iwela, who now has a seat at the South African Presidential Economic Advisory Council. Yet, Nigeria can boast of only 6% women representation as her government seat as against Rwanda of 61%. I will at this point beckon on us, just as Ekene has said, woman to woman, it's time to rejuvenate the labels of our shiro's past. Let's build capacity for the task ahead. Be involved in economic conversations, increase your political participation, and if they fail to invite us to the table, it's time we create our own table and take our seats. <laughs> you know, let, 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 let me say, this is very interesting, <clears throat> but I, I have a, 
slightly. I'm, not, I'm also going historically. I'm not trying to uh, create another debate. But mm -hmm. I think that the influence of, of um, Abrahamic religions, Christianity, Islam, has affected this, the balance of power, uh, especially in our society. Because historically, you know, the African woman uh, did not need permission to sit on the table. I mean, if you look at even traditional institutions like uh, from Igbo land, where I'm from, <coughs> excuse me, the Umwada. Mm, they're quite powerful. Extremely powerful, you know. Um, and, and they didn't need, they don't need any permission to, be, to sit at the table. Oh. They, they actually create the table. They allow men in. Mm. Um, and, and society. And society and, but, with. but I think with, you know, the rise of the new Christianity and the dominance of the religions, um, um, it's sort of because Western religion, um, you know, and their own history, these guys went to war, they were built fundamentally for violence, they understand it. So they kept women aside. I want what to is slightly, what I want is to religion slightly, Western? Um, well, I'm saying, but it's, it, it, it's become, I mean, they've adopted it. They've, no, they've adopted it. And it has this influence because yeah. traditionally, the African mm -hmm. woman, they didn't, I mean, they didn't need permission. Uh, and we adopted their politics. We adopted. We adopted their politics. Yeah. We adopted the religion. We adopted it's, the culture. It's the interpretation and of what we adopted. Again, back to thinking yeah. for ourselves. Because, I, like you were talking, when I listened to you, I thought of the about women's riot. Yeah. 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 And when she talked of that, how yeah. we 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 end our own activism on social media. So the problem is how we have interpreted whatever it is we've adopted. That's where I'm taking yeah. it from. Because a lot of times, these women, when I read about the Abba Women's Riot, I was so impressed. It was mm -hmm. just very spontaneous. Mm -hmm. These people were coming to tax her, and she said, would you tax your, your widowed mother like that? So she carried herself to another woman, and they ganged up. And even though they lost 50 women in that riot, they just decided that they were not going to let these people keep taking money from them. And I think even the one you referred to, uh, uh, Kuti's yeah, mother, was yeah. over taxation yeah. as well. They just said, we've had enough. But sometimes we go on social media, we say no more, no more. But we don't actually step into the ring. Into the so we feel we've played our part by social media. But there, where they didn't have social media, they didn't have... They, so when I say misinterpretation, is that even the Abrahamic religions, you have strong women, like yeah. the prophetess Deborah, you have women who stood spontaneously. But if you translate that to mean, maybe you read women, be whatever it is you're reading. Well, so how, many, how many of those women are we talking about? I think right. it, for them, for there to question. have been you know, even one or two, that's a very men that question. anybody could have seen in that religion, yeah. uh, a permission to step into to step the, in. Well, but it, so it depends on how you translate it. That's that, really that, what that, I'm that's saying. That's a way to look at it. Mm. Uh, you can decide to take your example in those strong women that appear there. But when you really dig, dig into those religions, you have situations where women are not even counted. So they're talking about the, the, the population of a place. And you count the men, and those are, that is what you keep in the records. Okay. You know, so it shows um, some sort of relegation, probably cultural. Some of the culture of those places also entered into the beliefs. There is, there is no way you can totally separate what people believe and then the religion that they came to adopt. I can't speak you know. for Islam, but yeah. I understand. Yeah. So th th those things are there. And I, I asked a question very recently, still on this matter. That is it an accident that since 1774, even America has not produced a female president? Mm. Is, it, is it a coincidence? Yeah, I don't know why that. Is. No. Oh. Because even in I Nigeria, where we had a female president candidate, it was ironic. It was just Only one, one vote. Person, one vote. <laughs> that must, to me, that we don't actually for. even believe in we our women be, folk. True. That's, that's actually But I believe, I really believe I, that the I, day I, the I women folk I rise this, up. This culture, this, uh, you know, for me, I, I strongly believe that, 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 um, you know, this religion that we've adopted um, had an influence on, on, on the balance of power with regards to how uh, women were treated. Um, and I think that, that the, the narrative is changing, and which is clearly very wonderful, because we're now realizing that, I mean, so many of the countries where, where you have predominant strong religions like that, as, you, as Milan was saying, don't even count women. I mean, in some countries, women are just uh, being allowed to drive. Can you imagine that? Uh, so You're just, looking at Islam. You don't confuse the two, though. But anyway. Well, we keep track of our history, whereas you keep track of us with your feedbacks. And on the complete edition, is Nigeria truly divided? Annie Am says, Sister Ikene, if your children can't speak our beautiful and adorable Igbo language, then they are not Igbo. <laughs> Annie Am, it's that interesting. They obviously forgot to seek your permission. Also on the episode, also on this episode, Florence Okialisin says, 
So who is Shekau? If Boko Haram is not Islamic, how much have you been paid for this publicity? I think you, Liberus, and your colleagues are just propagating and just much like the ones you criticize. Hmm. Florence, how did you arrive at that conclusion? Perhaps you need to interact with some of this Islamic faith and to understand if they identify with Boko Haram or not. On last week's episode, titled Change or Confusion, The Nigerian People Decide, Shiviko simply says, amazing video, it was really good. Thank you, Shiviko, glad you found it beneficial. Do keep your comments coming in on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to www.plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, check out takes on the matter of those previously thought as the untouchables. That is, until more recent news puts this view in perspective. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed, it's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. Well, well, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. That's it, it does. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just 